We are back along the shoreline of Lake Superior, and for the next couple days, we're gonna be tent camping in some remote country, checking out new rivers, and surf fishing on the shoreline of Lake Superior. And you might also notice that I picked up myself a new set of wheels as well. We're gonna hit the road, lose cell phone service pretty soon here, and enjoy the wilderness for the next few days. beautiful campsite here. The river is right off to our left. We wanted to camp closer to Lake Superior, but the wind is absolutely howling. So we came back in the pines a bit to use them as a wind block. We're gonna get camp set up here, and that'll be the first step of this adventure. Now it's time to get this baby cranking. It's cold, it's about 20 degrees, and it's not gonna warm up today. It is cold out right now. We got a ripping hot fire going in the tent, and it's time to go fishing and go on a little adventure here. So I'm gonna bring Jesse to the surf. He's gonna start fishing off the shoreline, and I'm gonna take you guys with me, and we're gonna go chop up some wood. It's going to be a cold one, man. It's going to be cold, but you never know. A little breezy, but that's beach fishing for you. If I get cold, I'll walk back to camp. See you in a bit, bud. Well, I'm not going to get too picky on what wood I cut here. Typically, I would like to find some cedar that will burn really hot to cook with and to get heat going quick in our camp. And I'd also like to find some hardwood, like some cherry or some oak, that would burn slow. But I'm just going to take what I can get here. The biggest thing is, is you don't want to cut a live tree down and you don't want to cut wood that's really rotting. You want to find a nice standing dead tree that's dead for sure, and that's going to be perfect, which I think we have one right here that we can start with. We're going to need a lot of wood so I'm just gonna get cutting. Okay, well that ought to be good enough for now. Good enough for the next night or two anyway. And if we need more, we'll come back and cut more. What's the scoop on the surf bite? No surf bite this afternoon. Gotta go to a different spot, I think. Too many sandbars out there. I think you can catch some fish out there, but it's gotta be right away at daylight. Other than that, you gotta get out into some deeper water. Before we got out today while we had service, it said that there was a slight chance of a snowstorm coming in tonight. But we just heard on the radio that there is a good chance of a snowstorm coming in now and we could get six to 10 inches of snow overnight and the winds could gust up to 50 miles per hour. It might get a little gnarly in the tent camp tonight. We got a good stack of wood and we're all ready. I don't think we're gonna fish the rest of the afternoon. We only have about an hour and a half until dark. So we're just gonna get all rigged up and get ready to hit it first thing tomorrow morning. Okay, so since we're just hanging out at camp tonight, I'm gonna get some dinner going and we're gonna do another venison stew once again in the Dutch oven on top of the wood stove. But I'm also gonna make a homemade loaf of bread. You guys have seen me make both in previous episodes. I've made quite a few loaves of bread, but I have not made the combo with a homemade loaf of bread and a homemade stew. And that's what we're doing tonight. Going in with the yeast sugar combo. Now I'm gonna measure out a cup of warm water and now you guys will see this will begin to rise. Right now the yeast is being activated and it's coming to life. Okay, while our yeast is rising here, I'm gonna start chopping up some veggies for our stew and get it all prepped. There's just nothing like a homemade stew. We have our veggies chopped up, so for veggies, I'm doing green onion, yellow onion, mushrooms, carrots, celery, 
the potatoes and I'm gonna make the broth out of a tomato sauce base which is like a California style I guess I don't know I've never tried this before but we're gonna give it a shot here tonight usually I use a beef broth but we're gonna try the California style baby now with our meat here, I'm just going to cut it up into nice little bite sized pieces. This is one of the tougher cuts on the hind quarter and that's why we're using it as a stew. That way it'll just slow cook and it'll become very tender. You can probably see there's a little bit of talon on there still, but that's going to make no difference. Okay, into the pan we go. We're going in baby. Oh, that's gonna be a monster stew, dude. Oh my gosh, we made a lot. And then we go in with our tomato broth. That's gonna be a huge stew, dude. And one more thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of these bay leaves here. And these suckers add a lot of flavor. The wood stove's cranking. Listen to that heat. The aroma in this tent is unbelievable. I'm excited to check it out. Let's take a peek. Oh, look at this! I think the bears are still sleeping. We'd have company. <laughs> oh, look at that! The celery, carrots, potato, onion, nice and golden on the edges, but it's fluffy in the middle. I'm gonna take it off right now. Oh yeah! Oh, 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 oh yeah! Let's give it a try. Let's taste this tomato sauce broth. It has a great flavor. I think next time I'd add just a little bit more tomato sauce. I only used a small can. I'd probably use a full size can and I'd also season the meat. It all has a great flavor, but if we would have seasoned the meat and let it marinate for, I don't know, 12 to 24 hours, it would have made a little bit of a difference, but it's very good. And here we go, a big slice of homemade bread, fried in butter, and dipped in stew. That bread dipped in the stew is amazing. Some of Jesse's mother-in-law's homemade oh, banana yeah. bread. I think we have about 40 mile an hour steady this morning. She's rocking and rolling out there. And beach rods are gonna be a uh, <laughs> Hot yeah, coffee in yeah, the morning. Buddy. Look at these tracks here. That's a couple different sets of tracks. Let's see, we might have a pack of wolves running this road, man. Let's check it out real quick. This is cool. We gotta keep an eye on Oliver at camp though because this is real close to our camp. We're only about 100 yards from our camp and look at that. That's a good sized track, dude. That's a wolf for sure. No doubt about that one. Well, there's definitely a whole pack of wolves working in this area. Right now, there's three sets of tracks going directly down the road, but as we're driving, there's other sets of tracks that are cutting in and out of the pines. So there's a pack of wolves working, working our camp woods, man. Uh -huh. Well, as you can tell, conditions are not exactly pleasant. The wind is coming in at about 30 mile an hour steady with gusts to 40 or maybe even more. And the snow is just sideways, baby. It was a go, I'm getting a bite. See what we have here, baby. It's a coho, it's a coho. It's a beautiful coho. Look at that, baby. Yes, we have a coho. That's actually a small steelhead, guys. So I'm gonna release this fish real quick. Watch this, he's gonna take right off. If that was a coho, I would have kept him and he shot right off. Well, welcome back. We have been at Burger King for probably the last hour or so. I had to fix this camera. The wind gust blew over my tripod when this camera was on it and just about shattered the lens. I don't know how it didn't, but I've got it repaired, I think. Fingers crossed. We have both fished in a lot of cold weather in our day. But that stuff this morning was some of the coldest stuff I've fished in a real long time. It was just honestly pretty miserable. So 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna head up in the river. It'll still be very cold on the river, but at least we'll have a wind block because it does not look like the wind's gonna calm down anytime soon. I'm having a hard time getting good drifts with this braid. Oh, and a little summer sausage? Okay. We're throwing down here, guys. PB and J and summer sausage, man. Oh, yeah. Grape jelly for the win. Fueling up for this late night bourbon bite, baby. <laughs> oh, boy. Are you ready? Game on. There will never be a day that he does not chase that ball. Guys, this rod just flattened right over. There's a fish on, baby. That's a fish on, baby. And we are hooked up here in 100 feet of water. What is it? What is it? Is it a coho? Oh, yeah, it's a coho. Beautiful coho. There's our dinner right there, baby. <laughs> nice. We went up to the truck. Jesse was going to get me a swivel. I'm going to start casting this orange moonshine. And we looked back, and his rod was just getting hammered by this coho. Look at how beautiful that fish is. He's not a monster, but that's going to be a delicious fish for dinner. And we have really groceries. Buddy. Groceries. Okay, here we go. Going out with the moonshine. Oh! Oh my gosh, this rod's getting flattened, guys. Holy moly, this rod is getting flattened. There's a good fish. That's a good fish. What is that, dude? That thing absolutely got smoked. Same rod, too. What do we have here? I don't know, probably another coho, it feels like. That Them thing, little things are hammering it, though. I can't days. believe how hard that fish hit that rod. I know it. Oh, it's head shaking. What is it? What is it? It's a splake. Oh, it's a splake. Look at that beautiful splake, guys. That's going to be close to a keeper, but I think that's 15 inches. Beautiful splake. Okay, well before darkness settles in, I'm gonna get some cut bait out and I'm gonna cast it out on the bottom. We're gonna see if we can catch some bourbon after dark tonight. Right here, I have a smelt. I picked up some frozen smelt from a bait shop nearby and I'm gonna deploy this. Okay, here we go. It's burb 30. Still sinking, still sinking, just hit the bottom. Took almost 40 seconds to hit the bottom. Guys, I'm getting a bite on this rod, baby. Getting a bite on this rod. There we go, it's a fish on, baby. That's a fish on, baby. Oh, it's a burb. Not a big burb, but it's a burb. No. It's a splake. It's a splake. It's a splake. It's a splake. <laughs> it's a splake. No way. Nice, dude. A splake on a smelt, and I believe that's a keeper. We're going to measure them to make sure. But guys, we caught a splake on cut bait on the bottom at night. Huh, look at that. Nice. Three pieces in one split. And we're going on with our leftover stew, getting it warmed up. And here we go to cap off our day of splake and hammer this and hit the hay. Get ready to do it again tomorrow. Ready to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> what up, dog? Well, good morning and welcome back. We got a good night's sleep last night. We slept in, it's about nine o'clock right now. We probably didn't get to sleep until, I don't know, 1.30 or so after getting back from burbot fishing last night or trying to burbot fish last night, I should say. Maybe we should say we were splake fishing at night with cut bait. I don't know, whatever it's gonna be, but we're gonna get some breakfast on. We're gonna get some coffee going. It looks like it's gonna be in the upper 30s and the wind isn't blowing. Heat wave. Heat wave. Big old stack of crispy bacon. We have cheesy scrambled eggs, bacon, venison steaks, homemade bread, and look at that. Jesse's mother-in-law made a homemade jar of raspberry jam that we're gonna put on top of our homemade bread. And that is gonna rock, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my gosh, this raspberry jam on this homemade bread is gonna be unbelievable. Why well, had to come outside. Our tent is a sauna once again, but here we go. Homemade bread with homemade raspberry jam. That is a treat, man with our cheesy scrambled eggs. 
Mmm. We got a critter right around down there. Crispy bacon. And then our venison steak. That's how you start a morning right there, folks. Wow. What a breakfast. Some cheesy scrambled eggs, unseasoned venison. And here we go, buddy. There we go. We got a fish on guys. This rod just got slammed. I don't know what it is, but it's decent. Oliver's in the game. We're coming up. This fish is flying right at me right now. Gosh, I can't even reel fast enough. Here we go. He's coming up, coming into the rocks. What do we have? Whoa. Look at that. Not a monster, but a beautiful brown trout. And we will definitely take him. That is a beautiful fish. And we have the day started. We now have a brown, a splake, a coho, and a steelhead on this trip. Multi-species once again. Well, we have arrived at our final spot of the day here. This is the same spot that we left on last night. And we're gonna see if we can repeat some magic out here. We tried a couple different spots. I caught that one brown, but that was the only bite we had. So we're gonna see if this one pays off again. Well, all day today, Jesse and I have been spreading out, trying to dial in these spots. Close to where Jesse's at is one of the steepest drop-offs I have ever personally witnessed in the Great Lakes region. In about 20 yards, it goes from zero to 100 feet. When we cast out our two ounce sinkers, it takes over 30 seconds for them to hit the bottom. So he's fishing on the edge of that deep water. I'm gonna come down and I found a little flat right out behind me here. There's a couple small peninsulas and there's a shallow flat that I can see with my polarized sunglasses. And I'm gonna try to fish right on the edge of that shallow flat. And I'm gonna use it as kind of a pinch point and see if we can have success here tonight. This rod's getting bit, guys. Guys, get bit, get bit. There we go, baby. Fish our own, baby. Let's fish our own, baby. Here we go, guys. Coming up the drop. Well, we'll see what we have here. Unbelievable how deep it is. Oh, he's putting up a fight now. I see, I see color. What is it? It's a, sm it's a small splake. It's a small splake. Okay, that's a start, though. <laughs> Well, Splake have to be 15 inches to keep, and this one is only 14, so we're gonna send him home. And there he goes. But hey, that is an awesome start. We have our first fish on the bank in this spot, and it's early. We have plenty of time. Okay, I'm gonna deploy my cut bait here. I have a dead smelt. I buried a treble hook in it, and I'm gonna deploy this out into about 100 foot of water. Here we go. Guys, I just had a fish absolutely annihilate this lure. I just had one heck of a bite on this lure. It followed it! It followed it! Guys, I just had a coho follow it all the way to the shore. <laughs> right off the surface here. Oh, I felt, oh, there he is! Oh, I had him! I had him! I had him, dude! Oh, he hit it on the fall. Oh, come back, come back! Come back, come back. Oh, did you see that fish? About five casts prior to that, I had a good hit casting, and then I had that fish chase my lure all the way to the shore, but he turned on it. I flipped it back out there just 10, 15 feet offshore, jigged it a couple times, had him, but he came off. And uh, that's just the way it goes. We're gonna keep casting, see if another one bites. 
Well, I think that's a wrap. I had a couple opportunities on this lure. My buddy Jay recommended it to me and uh, definitely had my chances, but was not able to capitalize. We're gonna hit it in a different location first thing tomorrow morning and see if we can make something happen. But it's been a great trip and uh, definitely had a couple fun opportunities at some coho this evening. There we go, we have flame. The heat is rising. Well, what a beautiful morning. We have a slight inshore breeze, but it is not very windy. I shouldn't say that though, I'm gonna jinx us. Going with a big, juicy chartreuse bag this morning. Yeah, baby. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two rods out with me. Since we have a long wait out into the lake, I'm gonna try to kill two birds with one stone and get two baits out there. Okay, here we go. Going out for an ice bath. Made it through the first trough. It's getting shallower. Now we're gonna go to the next drop off. Okay, that's as good as it's gonna get. <sighs> Bombs away, baby, okay. I'd say about six, seven foot of water we're in, guys. I'd give it a solid six, seven foot of water. Well, the outer drop-off is only about knee deep and it's out there probably about 150 yards. When I casted these two lines out, I got way past the drop-off, but I ran out of line on my walk back in. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tallest rod holder and I'm gonna go out there with two rods and I'm gonna go stand out there. That way I know my baits are in fishable water. There could be fish in this inside, but it's only about waist deep right now. So I wanna get out a little farther if I can. Okay, here we go. Got one in my hand, two in the rod holders. I had one good tall rod holder and I had to stack my other two to keep the reel out of the water. And that is our setup this morning, guys. I feel like we're in good water and we stand a good chance to catch a fish. We'll see what happens. And once again, we have some big storm fronts coming in right now. Off to my left, we have a light snowfall coming down and it's foggy, but off to my right, look at those dark clouds. And there is no telling what that may bring. Well, it's safe to say our bites did not come easy on this trip, but we worked hard and grinded out a few nice fish and we are bringing home some delicious fillets. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Jesse caught one nice steelhead this morning on the beach. It was when we were both wading out in the water and I wasn't able to get it on film because we're about 100 yards apart. So at least we caught one fish, but like I said, it wasn't easy. Thanks so much for watching everyone and we will see you in our next episode.